Amongst the more interesting simulation tools added to 3ds Max in recent times is the Populate plugin, which has previously been released through Autodesk Labs as Geppetto. Populate occupies a bit of a unique space in that it is a character or crowd based simulation system. Now, whilst not designed to compete with any of the digital actor tools that are available, such as Massive and the like, Populate nevertheless holds a lot of promise for any 3ds Max artist who needs to quickly and easily populate their archviz, broadcast, or even motion graphic scenes. To follow along with the work we will do in this video, open up the populate.max scene file from the working files folder. As you can see, this is a basic previous scene that we can imagine is being used to block out a shot for either a live action or animated sequence. Let's imagine that we have been asked to populate the scene with some people just to enhance the feel a little. Well, populate is exactly what we can do. To access the tools, we first of all need to make sure that we have our ribbon active. If it currently isn't, all we need to do is right click an empty area up on the main toolbar and select the ribbon option. As mine is already visible, we can of course skip this step. The first thing we need to do is define which area or areas need people adding to them. As our scene currently has three areas of sidewalk or pavement visible, I'm going to assume we want to use all three. Of course, if you were actually prevising a shot, you should have a detailed note from the director that will need to be followed. The best place to create the flows that Populate uses for the character simulation will generally be the top viewport. So let's hit the T key to switch our view over and then middle mouse wheel scroll to pull back a little. At the moment, of course, our ribbon is running in minimized mode. So let's click to show the full ribbon and switch over to the Populate tab. As we have noted, the first thing we need to do is create a number of flows that can serve as pathways for our populace to walk along. On the ribbon then, click the Create Flow button, and then click and trace out the path, which we will of course adjust later. Once we've created a path, we need to right click to terminate it, and then we can of course begin creating a new one. When we have them all in place, we can right click twice to end the flow creation process altogether. To edit our flows, all we need to do is select any one of them and then come over to the Modify tab. As you can see, we have a number of parameters that can be altered before we create our people. The first thing we need to do is select each of the flows in turn and set their width to a value of 180 centimeters. We will also want to press the W key to enable the move tool and just make sure that our flows as a whole are correctly aligned to our sidewalk geometry. Of course, the likelihood that we will create our flows perfectly first time around is pretty slim. So it is really nice that we can go ahead and edit subcomponents of the flows to place them more precisely. So we can, for instance, access point subobject mode and position the individual points in our flows so that our people will be walking exactly where we want them to. If point control is a little finer than we need, we can also use adjust segments and affect a larger section of the flow. On each flow, I want to increase the density slider to a little over halfway. As you can probably guess, this slider determines how dense the crowd on this particular flow will be. My recommendation would always be to start off with lower values and then work up in increments instead of throwing more at your computer than it may be capable of handling. With our move tool still active, let's set the Z position for each of the flows to 10 centimeters so that it roughly is aligned with the top of the sidewalk geometry. We can do this in the transform fields down at the bottom of the UI. Now we are ready to click the simulate button and take a look at what we get. Once the simulation is done, let's come back to our camera view by hitting the C key and then press play down in the animation playback controls. As you can see, we do indeed have a handful of people walking along our paths and we can of course make changes to the flow settings and then just come back up and re-simulate. A nice feature of Populate is the fact that we can create idle areas in our scenes that can also be populated with characters. To do this, 
let's delete the flow on the right hand side of the street. And then on the ribbon, click the Create Rectangular Idle Area button. And we just want to click and drag to draw out a rectangular idle area, making certain that it is wide enough for our character indicators to pop into view. Once that is done, we can press the Simulate button again. And now, along with pedestrians on the other flows, we also get a group of people just standing around idling. You will also notice that in the Modify tab, we do have a number of options that give us a measure of control over how the crowd inside the idle areas behave. One last feature that is well worth noting is the fact that we can change the display type of the generated characters according to the needs of our scene. The four types available are, first of all, stick figures. Using this, crowd members appear as, well, <laughs> simple stick figures. Now the stick figures don't render, so we would probably only use this option mainly to improve feedback when setting up the scene. We next have a custom skin option. Now this applies an empty grey material to each character, which means we can then go and use the material editor to modify the material. Do note that with this and the next two options, Populate applies a multi sub object material made up of standard materials to each crowd member. If we are using 3ds Max Design, however, the standard materials are replaced with Arch and Design materials. If we want to switch to using Arch and Design materials in 3ds Max, open the Custom UI and Default switcher, and under Initial Settings for Tool Options, Choose a mental ray or eye ray default, such as max.mental ray. Restart the application and then re simulate. We can, of course, switch the other way by choosing a default that makes use of the scanline renderer. Our third option, Crowd Skin, applies a low resolution textured material to each of our characters. This is the default option, as this is, of course, useful for most situations. Finally, we have high res skin. This applies a high resolution textured material to each character. If the necessary data is not installed, we will be taken to a website where you can download the installer. As you can see, whilst Populate is not going to be giving us hordes of programmable characters running through the streets of our sitter, what we have is nevertheless a very useful crowd population tool that opens up lots of creative possibilities for our scenes and projects.